Yeah, these two are building Oh my up. goodness, oh, he, He's already spicy, mate. Take <laughs> him the six o'clock base here at this gold base. This is this is what you want to see from Hero. Like, Maru was, Maru was aware of it, that this guy can play crazy, but he was thinking crazy aggressive, not like this. And I absolutely love the call for Cloak Banshees here, because it's going to be very hard to get an Observer at the bottom side of the map and get an Observer in the main base, and perhaps an Observer on the other side of the map to actually see what the Terran player is doing. So Cloak Banshees actually have a lot of potential in games like this. Even if you think about just the defensive capabilities, right? There's not going to be a robot on the field for quite some time, so... If you can use that Banshee just to help out with the defense, because, oh my god, Hero is a cheeky boy. So he's going for Blink Stalkers with this goal base to kind of power up and get it up and going even faster. But then he's going for Dark Shrine very quickly after. This isn't the normal kind of Protoss play you see at all, but Maro will be aware that he is against the goal base now. Yep, but it's not just the standard goal base, right? Because he actually sees a gas that's up and running here. So at this point, you're like, hmm. That is a bit different, because normally if you scout the gold as a Terran player, you're like, okay, I get it, you're going to go like 8 gates, sell old charge, and you're going to just try to completely overrun me. But if you scout the gold, then you're like, you've taken a gas as well, the gold. That actually complicates things a little bit, as this Cyclone is in a bit of a pickle. The Stalker could potentially blink forward, but Hero feels that that would be a wrong decision, as he's like, repair is pretty good. Probably yeah. has learned his lesson over time. You know? Probably has, probably has. Better safe than sorry, especially in the semi-finals, right? And he has waited with that Banshee. He's kind of waiting for Cloak. And he's going to do the... He did the Zerg trick, right? Where you play against Zerg players, you Cloak from a very far distance away. But there is going to be four Sorks in the back here, but Maru more than prepared for this. Does give away that he has gone for Banshee tech here, though. What is in the main base? Do we have a shield battery in the main base? Yes, we do. I actually think that the Banshee of Maru should go for the battery as the other Banshee runs into the Stalkers. Good job by Maru. Excellent multitasking. He is indeed going for the battery. That's absolutely the correct call. You don't want to give Protoss players all the time in the world to get ready. And one Banshee actually falls or takes out a battery relatively quickly. And now Hero is losing a lot of mining time. He's going to end up losing a handful of workers as well. And I already felt the Cloak Banshee had a lot of potential. In the end, it will fall. But I still think this is an excellent Excellent bench, and if Hero had any sort of an economic lead because of that very quick gold base, well, I think it's safe to say that that is absolutely gone. Blink DT coming online along with Charge. This, this is the kind of game that Hero could turn this into something very short, but I'm totally with you. That Banshee also gave him the information that it was a Dark Shrine. It got right on top of that, got the full scout. And Maru, look at that, he's going for a nice quick third CC with this. He's playing slow, he's playing steady. He's very safe, and you've always got to remember that gold base, even though it is a good pump to your economy, it lasts a lot less time than a normal base would. So Mara looks like he's just kind of going to slow down the game a little bit and be okay with this situation. What was that map again that we had in the previous map, oh Ben, where the gold base had eight mineral patches instead of six? I'm always terrible with map names, but that is also something that uh, we could keep in mind. This is not one of these gold bases where it's like, it has eight mineral patches, it's absolutely insane. Like, no, a gold is really good because you can saturate it with less workers and you get a lot of income. But in the end, like a fully saturated blue mineral line with eight patches is actually kind of close to the gold. And then on top of that, the gold runs out very quickly. So I don't think that Hero is really getting too much value out of it yet. You think it's going to be Colossus first? I think it has to be, right? Although I, I see this arm and it's like you've got the counter to the Colossus and the Disruptor no matter what you make. Hero's going to be very scared about this army coming across the field because you got to remember, this is 1-1 one, one as well with this army. Like, Zealots won't stand a chance. It does look like, oh, the DT comes and sneaks in again, kills a tank, kind of runs beautiful. away, and he's very annoying over there. Yep, that's beautiful. He's going to force Mario to use another scan. It will be Colossus at first, but Hero's really going to need to Corona boost the hell out of those bad boys as he drops another Nexus as well. It almost feels that he's not taking this army of Maru very seriously. Uh, I kind of am, but Maru is obviously leaving a lot of units at home. But armies like this have game-ending potential. We've seen Bunny end a couple of PVTs or TVPs rather very early in his playoff run so far. Guardian Shield has been activated. The force fields are not fantastic. Only a couple of Terran units actually got squeezed away from the rest of the army. And Hero is just buying time right now for that Colossus to come out. But it seems that the first Colossus that will come out is being built in the main base. So it takes a little while. And I honestly think Hero can be very lucky that Maru didn't try to go for the goal. That would have been a lot harder. We do have a proper counterattack, though. That's a decent amount of Zealots. And at the same time, Hero feels that he can do something on his side of the map. I feel that Maru should be fine here with the amount of Widow Mines he has. He should be fine. Had to pop all that energy on that Raven, though, just to kind of save his middle army. Maybe a little bit uh, premature there. But these Zealots, absolutely the winner here for Hero in this little mishmash. 
maybe uh, just prevented Mara from really focusing on the front there, but that Bashi, uncontested, going to take out one of the sentries. That's really big for the Guardian Shield, lacking in the next fight. We had triple sentry. All three sentries have fallen. Like, Hero really got a bit overconfident there, I think, by chasing the army. Don't think he really found a lot of victories. Once more, I do think that Maru, if that army would have gone for the gold immediately, it would have been so hard, especially considering where the Colossus came from, right? Hero was clearly trying to buy time for his Colossus to come out, uh, but Maru is probably just feeling like, I've got two, two upgrades on the way, it's all good. Hero is poking with the Colossus, his Thermal Lens is done. One Interference Matrix is gonna scare this Protoss army away. Uh, Hero wants to be very aggressive, and I like the idea of being aggressive, but he is economically behind, and it does not feel that this is the best Protoss army of all time, but he must really be very confident in the ability of the Immortals to just gun down the Marauders and the Colossus to gun down the Marines. We did just go from zero to four Colossus, as a lot of the Colossus do get softened up by some leftover Widow Mines, but he is absolutely sending it, Ben, but the 2-2 upgrades are pretty much done for Maru, and I kind of think that Hero is making a mistake. I, I think so too. He's sticking around for a long time. I mean, this is his power spike, right? That is a lot of Colossus, but that is a big concave of bio already ready. That immortal, that goes down. That army gets a lot more brittle. The Colossus still standing strong, but Maru, a nice sweep in from the Zealots on the right side, but Maru's supply still absolutely phenomenal here. And that was not the timing to attack, I feel, with those upgrades finishing. Uh, it obviously always feels so tempting. Oh, okay, Maru is like, hey, these mines have been here for a little while. Let's go ahead and run them into the natural hero. Is aware of it and does pick off one of them, but these mines are permanently cloaked. Oh, 12 <laughs> probes. That was lovely target fire. You saw Hero leaving one probe behind there, but he was not fully aware. There's a lot going on right now. And Maru, he's played this game so opposite. Oh, okay, he's coming in from the top, a massive army. There's only two disruptors in the mix. That's all this firepower got. That was a nice, chunky amount of ghosts going down. In fact, you had two more disruptors. Uh, forgive me there, but the Colossus is going to get chased down. And right now, all the damage in that army completely gone. And Hero knows it. He has to get away. Maru Don't also worry. just chasing him down. We have a battery here, so we can always pop overcharge as well if Maru really wants to go for it. But there's no need for Maru to take a crazy fight oh! right now. A few more Novas, and those are the Novas that we are talking about. It felt that Maru was close to ending this game, and I do still think he's in an excellent position. But he needs to start paying a little more attention to these Novas as Hero is finally getting some points on the board. I think Hero just traded for like 4,000 resources more and more effectively over the last 90 seconds. I, I think in this last uh, minute or so, he's done better than he did the whole game with yeah, his uh, cheeky stuff. And it's much thanks to these disruptors. He's playing very good with them. This might be a bit too eager though, but again, just using two at a time, not being too over eager about it. He's playing really annoying in this fights and he's the one that his army's gonna keep on getting bigger at this moment, right? Like Maru's maxed out. This is about as good as it gets for him. Almost every single fight up to that point did not go Hero's way and it really felt that he was moments away from being forced to tap out, but those Novas were good and it's giving him a little bit of a lifeline. Doesn't mean he's suddenly winning, absolutely not. But Maru is going to have to control his army a little bit better. The disruptors are very exposed, and I think Maru is just going to go for it. He goes for a pickup on a couple of these medevacs. He's oh. now forced to unload again, and Hero is just getting great Nova after great Nova. And Maru can thank the Lord that that planetary fortress is going strong. Otherwise, this would have actually became very problematic. This Maru really needs to be a little bit careful because he was playing such a magnificent first game. But the last few minutes have been a bit brutal for him. The eight disruptors are just the majority of uh, what's really the bane of his existence, what's really causing all the issues here. Maru is setting up the flank and he's going to go for it, man. He certainly is. All the disruptors are very exposed here. Big disruption shots going out, but lovely snipes out of Maru. He stops all the disruptors from shooting. He does lose the PF, uh -huh. but Hero lost his entire army. And oh my goodness, look at those supplies. Maru was waiting for that moment. Oh, what a wraparound by him. And I think he smells blood in the water. Hero did not have a good army to take out of the planetary. If you want to get in range of a planetary, you need to have the kind of army that can kind of take it down in a couple of seconds. A few it, mortals in the mix and yep, such. He had one or two immortals, but it just took way too long. Obviously, Maru did a great job with the repair, and Hero gave himself a bit of hope in this first game that honestly was pretty brutal from the very beginning, but I think that is a mistake that he can absolutely oh. not recover from. He's going to donate a few more units at the planetary fortress in the bottom right side, but Maru says repair is one hell of a drug. He's sieging up, but there is nothing to protect here. These units will go uncontested, as we do have a couple of Novas apparently. I guess those disruptors still pop and once more the connections are good. But as Letot said, the supply does not lie. No, Maru. I mean he's making a good amount of adepts here, you know, just been cranking them out. But he has to be careful. Only one appeared first with the shade, but I think he's handling the situation quite well. It's the next two units that come out from Maru that will make these adepts. Oh well, he'll, he'll have to run around or find out what he wants to do. Maybe he's just gonna try and shade into a corner and recall out here. No, he's actually gonna go for it. What happened to the other uh, two units that Maru made? 
I'm not sure, but they are uh, they're not here. Them? Wow, two Reapers actually getting picked off, and that means there is only a Hellion left right now. That Hellion is ultra low in HP. That Cyclone is only like 20% done. Heroes off to an absolutely flying start. What is Maru's army right now? Is it that Hellion and the Cyclone that's in production? Is that it? I oh my so. goodness, what a delay on this command center. And these two adepts have been cash money. Absolutely handled them really damn well. and. You know, he doesn't even have to run away right now. He's being very annoying with this. And Maru, look, just buy in time. Just, oh, this is value for money. Uh, yep, two Marines do finally pop, but that's painful. As this Hellion did <laughs> get a little uh, tour around the map, but it's also going to get picked off. Oh, Stark no. count is now at three. One Cyclone will have some high ground potential with the, with the high ground there, or, or at least utilizing the ramp. But obviously, we have the Adept. This Shade can give some high ground vision. Nice micro by Hero as he breaks the lock on, finds a few more SCVs. You don't want to throw away too many Stalkers, obviously. Those are pricey units, but so far, what a game by the man that's down 0 1. Look at that worker count 24 SVs to 37 probes. A three gate opening. He's got way more army than Maru in his base. Denies the orbital as well. This is a disaster. And what I absolutely love is that he's actually going charge before Blink. Even though right now his army consists of all these stalkers, that's pretty much the only thing that he has. He's going to go Blink. Uh, he's going to go charge before Blink because he probably feels that the only thing that Maru can really do in a game like this is move out with a tank, a cyclone, a couple of marines, bring a few SCVs and make it uncomfortable if all you have is Blink stalkers. I am surprised that he's making more stalkers right now though. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. But he is going into that Blink. He's got a lot of gateways. I, I don't know what his robo situation is like, but... It's non-existent. Yeah, that's that's scary. That's yeah, precarious. It's a little bit unnecessary, I feel. I think that Hero's playing a more risky game here than he's supposed to. There, we do see that robotics facility being warped in, but this would have been such a sweet game to just get a Robo, get a Forge, start working on your upgrades, and keep building probes. There's a good chance that he's going to win here in a very, a very stylish and explosive manner. A couple of DTs blinking on top of buy units, and we all love that, and the crowd will go wild, and then it's all good, but... Obviously, semi-finals is not really the place to experiment. We do have one Dark Templar just very casually blinking into the main base and is already finding some success. So, so far, so good for Hero. But now Maro is also going to look at this and be like, hmm, Blink DTs already? Okay. You, you might be absolutely right. There is the Robo Bay coming online right now, so we can start those big AoE kind of units here. But that Warp Prism might have a bit of work to do. I mean, if it does good damage here, then Maru's absolutely just limping around at this stage. But yeah, Maru doesn't want to be dealing with this right now, which is exactly oh. why Hero's doing it. And it's a big committal as well. The Widow Mines do get to go down, which will help. And Hero, he just has no chill this game, man. Um, this Ghost Academy is actually a very tanky building. <laughs> it's hard for uh, Zealots to take it out. In the end, it's only three SCVs for a decent amount of Zealots, a little bit of lost mining time. I'm very happy to see that Hero is dropping the second Forge, so he can be a bit more competitive when it comes to the upgrades. But Maro is just doing all the right things. There is not a whole lot that he can do offensively. Some people might be like, why is he not dropping and stuff? Hero was going to have too much map vision. Obviously, Maru doesn't know, but we know that Hero's uh, Robo was a bit late. He probably feels there are observers left, right, and center. That Blink was very quickly done for the Stalkers. And he's like, well, I'm already off to a disastrous start. I cannot afford to lose any more units. What I can do is just macro up a little bit. Get a couple Ghosts, get a couple Vikings, work on my upgrades. And perhaps Hero, who is definitely known to become... Sometimes a little overconfident and carried away. Maybe Hero will overextend. Maybe he will attack into a certain setup that he's not supposed to attack into. And then I am completely back in the game. And Maru probably believes that that approach is more likely to succeed than him being crazy aggressive when he's already behind. You know what I'm starting to worry about for Hero here? Like, I haven't seen his late game PVT in a while. And I know that Maru is the kind of guy that doesn't shy away from it if he's forced into it. But it looks like he's totally hunkered down here, Kev. Like, He's kind of realized if he did push out, if he did go across the other side of the map to slow down the Protoss, probably wasn't going to work. And I think he's going to start forcing it to a stage of the game that he is pretty much the only Terran on the planet that can play it, which that is when your PVT practice becomes almost redundant. A couple of Zealots getting dropped into the natural, though, as that one missile turret was not quite done yet, but there are a lot of Widow Mines, and it's so damn difficult for random Zealots to be successful, as the main army is going to try to come in from the right side. We do have War Prism Speed close to finishing up. Interference Matrix went down, and look at the supplies all of a sudden. Hero just dropped 40, 50 supply, and I know he's been rich, but 76 probes against 68 SCVs, he's really not that much richer anymore than Maru is at the moment with Triple Orbital. Bit of a comeback. 
and then he just struggled taking out the PF that was getting mass repaired. That planetary fortress at 6 o'clock is close to finishing up, and that means it's going to get more and more difficult for KB units, and he's still making a lot of zealots, a lot of stalkers. Hero is absolutely going for it here. He is looking for a great fight. He has a couple of disruptors in the mix, but the interference matrix went off on that disruptor that had a lot of potential, and Hero is forced to disengage. Did pick off a couple of tanks, and it does feel like he's creating a little bit of an opening for himself. But <sighs> Maru is playing one hell of a game so far from an absolutely awful start. Yeah, I mean, I, it was almost unwinnable, the position that he was, was. in. And this, <laughs> he's doing this against the best Protoss in the world. Like, there's no doubt in my mind right now that Maru is the only player in the world that can kind of, <laughs> can do this. And five Colossus, that's a big, big number. But these tanks, there's not really that much to really take them out immediately. Like, obviously you can blink on them and he's got a good amount of stalkers, but blinking into that, it's kind of suicidal. Yep. And having 20 Zealots, Zealots is a bit of a love-hate relationship for Protoss players in this phase in the game. We know that they can be awesome, but sometimes they can be a bit silly. If the bio ball gets big and they are forced to just kind of charge ahead of the rest of the army, Zealots are not the dream unit to max out on. That doesn't mean they will never find value, because if you can get on top of a couple of tanks, if the tanks are left at the third base and your main army is at the fourth, there is still a place for the Zealot, but just running into a bunch of Widow Mines and if they do get EMP'd, it's not the best unit, man. It's 119 army supply against 117. And I'm really starting to favor Maru, at least Maru's army. Uh, that doesn't mean that Maru can just run to the other side of the map and win, because Maru's army is super strong defensively, where the Widow Mines are already set up and whatnot. The Disruptors are going to try to take care of a couple of these Widow Mines, and that is very smart. Love those two shots by Hero. That was really good. Can we have a quick look at the resources lost tab here? Because it feels like, yeah, Maru's been trading absolutely phenomenally, almost a two to one ratio here. And Hero at some point, like he's got to realize that this gear in the car is not working. He's got to switch it up. Like Hero is going to have a hard time winning games like that with gateway units and Colossus, man. He certainly is. I mean, this army, it's, it's a great ground army, but once the Liberator is coming with plus two, this army, like he's going to have to start switching into Stargate units at some point. And I mean, I'm a little bit surprised when Maru's been so defensive that he didn't go for some of those picking units, like maybe Tempest or something like that. But yeah, this right now, it, it just ain't working for him. I feel like Protoss players are often afraid to go into Tempest too early because we're all like, almost every Protoss, you saw it in some of these segment pieces as well. I think Australia said it's like, Tempest is kind of sucks, man. Like, in theory, it's good, but it just kind of sucks. And I feel like we're almost afraid that we start making Tempest when we don't have to, and it's like, oh my god, this unit doesn't do any damage. And then you get rolled over by yeah. the bio army. Yeah, and then by the time that you kind of feel like, maybe I should get Tempest, then maybe it's already too late because you miss the window of opportunity where the Tempest could be fantastic. It does seem like we're getting a lot of cannons and batteries. I would kind of love to see where Hero's building goes. Can we take a look quickly? In the bottom right here. Yeah. I mean, it is nice play. Like, theoretically, this does turn into what? Like a seven versus five base situation. It I mean, you're going to settle for something. We even get the Medivac speed boost upgrade there by Maru, in case you guys are wondering what on earth is Maru researching. It just means that they oh, can boost for a disruptors. longer time. The disruptors are taking a lot of damage. This is too many tanks, man. Like, Hero, if you think of, <laughs> of breaking Maru right now, you simply won't. It feels once more, just like in the first game, even if we, if we had very different starts, that Hero misread the game a little bit, where he's like, I'm in a spot where Maru needs to do something. And he's probably going to move out, like we see Terran players do so often on these tiny maps, without Stim, without Combat Shield, without any eBay upgrades. And I just want to have a couple of units real quick that are good against that stuff, and then I'll smack it, and then I'll win. But Maru just sat back. And if Hero would have gone for this army right off the get-go, I don't think Maru ever secures a third base even. All right, by the time he does it, he has mined out his main base. But by sticking oh. on like Zealots and DTs for so long as we now have a nuke landing, this is why I wasn't ultra fond of all the static defense in the bottom right side. With that ramp on the left side, I feel like you're going to have endless cannons and batteries, but it's not great against tanks, liberators, and obviously nukes. I, I mean, like, okay, Hero is moving in here. It does do a big blink. I mean, lots of EMPs going down, but... Look at that army of Maru. I mean, so many tanks in good locations. And when all your Stalkers are out of shield, those tanks absolutely wreak havoc on them. And can we bring up the resources lost up against? This is not get Oh, my goodness. I mean, Maru Ridiculous. He is putting on a clinic here of how to play. Disruptor shots coming in. They do push the bio away, but it seems he's losing more every time. Okay, that's about the best shot he's had the whole game. 
Yeah, and it wasn't. <laughs> it, wasn't <laughs> well, it wasn't. It wasn't anything. No, it wasn't very good, mate. Uh, I feel like we had better shots on Star Gazers. Maro's definitely in his element, and Hero seems a bit confused, lost, and almost frustrated. Uh, maybe because he indeed misread the game, he's going to try one more time. He does have units for days. He has money for days. A lot of SCVs. You know, almost want to see the Colossus line up some shots there, so they can roast and those 10 plus SCVs at once. This thing and Hero get some momentum. Does have a lot of money though, and maybe Hero's just playing the War of Attrition here. He's like. I'm gonna have a lot more money than you do. Eventually, I'll be okay. I think he's playing a very risky game. It's ultra risky, but it could still work. We can make it seem that Hero is dead, but from, you know, in the beginning of the game, once those stalkers showed up and the CC was delayed, I think I gave Maru a 1% chance of winning this game. Right now, I'd say it's 50-50. I think so. I mean, this is actually quite a nice fight for Hero to take, I felt, the first time, ah. but no, his whole army's getting melted yet again. The Colossus they just can't stay alive against these plus two Vikings, soon to be plus three. It's not, a, I mean, yeah, that wasn't even a very nice fight. It's just that the EMPs will take off all the shields of the Stalkers, and with the upgrades that Maru currently has, the Liberators one-shot these Stalkers. So it's almost six impossible for, for the army. Yeah, we're building six lips over the time, because Maru knows, like, Hero, you can show up with 500 Stalkers. It's going to be okay. My EMPs will connect, and the Liberators will make short work of them. On top of that, there are a couple of well-protected tanks in the back. And Hero, time to cancel this Nexus, mate. I know it's 400 minerals and you have plenty, but these things will start adding up. And Maru is going to get his hands on the bottom right side. And Hero just looks lost. He's going to try with a couple of Zealots over here on the left side. And actually, the doors are wide open here, right? If you look at it, there are no bio units protecting these tanks at all. So this is an excellent run by, by Hero. Finally, he feels that he got the better trade. And he also gets on top of the command center. He will pick that one up. And he will avoid the Liberators at all costs. But we gotta show a little more respect. May How many gateways does Hero have? Like, I guess 14, 15, 16, eh? 20, 20 gateways. So, I mean, the flood cap mm. capability is there. It's just yeah. his army. Okay, okay. This is a nice little wraparound, but he has to be careful. And yet again, he's losing a lot, even though he's going for these nice, finessey kind of plays wrapping around. But that Liberator count, he has nothing to deal with those besides Stalkers. And mobility. Like, there is one thing that Liberators are not great at, and that is Boy, always bouncing. being in the correct place. He's going to try one more time. I would almost say, let's go ahead and get rid of these Colossus, because Maru has 14 Vikings, and you know, other than working against those Colossus, they are not very good. Maybe Hero's plan is just to purely win on the mobility of Gateway units, and then try to land a random Nova once. And his idea is never, I'm going to win a fight against you, Maru. No, I'm going to slowly but steady pick you apart, because I think I'm very rich. He is not that rich compared to Maru, but he is definitely finally finding success now on the left side. He realized that the doors are open, as we do have a nuke. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't pull a solar now, mate. Oh, I mean, Don't pull a solar! Oh, oh, oh my goodness. That was, that was a bit too close to comfort there. I mean, I feel like he <laughs> baited us, man. That's his hero. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to get us a heart attack, yeah. you know? But, okay, maybe attacking here might not be the best call. I mean, Maru isn't fully set up here with liberators and stuff, but it is a PF that you're finding against, although... He, do, he is still rich behind this. Yeah, yeah, no, this is very good right now by Hero because he has also forced Maru to just kind of run from the bottom right side back to the natural, bottom right side back to the natural. And while doing that, Hero has been comfortably mining of this base that otherwise would have been under a bit of pressure. He realized that the doors are open on the left side. He's finally breaking that setup. And now we've got a lot of DTs blinking into the main base as well. And this is where things get hard for Maru. Stalkers blink forward, not too many Liberators, a few Novas connect. Maru is forced to pick up the units. Hero's army is dropping a little bit. Can we take a quick look at how the Dark Templars are doing? Are they swiping up everything in the main base? Or is Maru... Oh, those ZTs are finding some value. They certainly are. I mean, Liberators are there now, but, you know, those bad boys can blink out of them. And the Disruptor shots, I mean, both players are playing at a ridiculous pace here. But it does feel that Hero is finally starting to break yeah. Maru and get him out of position here. Getting between the bases, that is a gnarly position for him to be in. It felt that that four base Maru was not something that he found any success against, but the moment that Maru tried to secure the bottom right side, that is where it became harder for the Terran to have all the units in the right place. And Hero is finally finding just much better fights, gets behind these Liberators as well. The Vikings do show up, a big anti armor missile lands. And I do think it's time for Hero to maybe just run away for a little bit, right? But you've done a lot of economic damage, you've got a great economy at home. It is time to just spend some of that money that you have in the bank. He queues up three Colossus at once, even though there are so many Vikings still, but I guess it's okay as he's also warping in 13 DTs. And can we take a look at that unit's lost uh, resource tab now? Because now it's a lot closer, right? Earlier it was like closing in oh. 13, 14,000. As all the DTs that were warped in show up in the bottom right side, Maru loses another base and 
Hero has made this very hard on himself, but in the end, he's like, guys, were you worried? Like, I'm not that worried. Looking perfectly fine, mate. And maybe his plan all along was like, okay, Terran gets up to four bases, but can he take a fifth? And Hero's answer was absolutely <laughs> not. And now Maru, I haven't seen that gas move for quite some time here. He's broke as a joke, and Hero, this is a much easier situation for him to deal with. And look yep. at these DTs, they're just running rampant. Definitely felt that we were sweating a little there, but in the end, Hero gets what he deserves. Not working on a command center on the low ground. That is not happening, but Zealots have a lot of DPS, and he will start working on this reactor. The Reaper should just turn around immediately, but the Adept is here as well to provide some support. And uh, Maro at this point is probably like, man, that Adept showed up so quickly, and he's just sent his Reaper to the other side of the map. Couldn't quite see the mini map, and that Reaper is going to look for a couple of probe kills, but it obviously means that the reactor ban has to be in some oh. trouble, and if Hero gets oh. the kill, which he does, he is off to an absolutely amazing start here. This reactor is burning down. Oh. This reactor will fall. The floodgates are open. A Zealot and an Adept, and ideally for Hero, another Adept is going to show up in the near future, and Maro is going to lose a couple of SCVs here, but the real question is how many? Uh, so far, he's doing really damn well with what he's got, right? Like, that Marine even staying oh alive here, and Maru... Oh, 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 my God. He handled that so well. He handled it unbelievably well. Like, he kept pulling back SCVs there between the two <laughs> two structures, and wow. the damage has been done by Hero to take out the reaction stuff, but holy hell, has it been minimized by Maru. Um, there is a Stalker now. Stalkers are the real problem here, right? Because there is no bunker. One Marine is very low on HP, so this is still going to be annoying. Maru is not quite done yet, and he knows it. Nice target fire there by Hero. One shot, one kill on the low HP Marine. He has extra gateways going up. He has a pilot. And, oh, man, Hero is always so aggressive and wild, and you never really know what you're up against. And I, I, Sometimes I don't even think that Hero necessarily always knows what he's doing. He's just like... Units are doing good right now. I want more units. Let's go for it. Bit of gateway pressure. And obviously all these stalkers, Ben. Ooh, Maru is going to be in for a bit of a surprise. And we still don't have a bunker. This has to be very bad news because we don't have a cyclone. We don't have a tank. And Hero is showing up with five stalkers. It feels like it's game uh, two all over again. But this time around, Maru has even less units. The only thing that Maru can do is indeed pull the SCVs and force the stalkers to go away because the stalkers don't have high ground vision. No, and I mean, these stalkers are one-shotting units at this point in time. And Maru is trying to fight with that vision on his side. And we'll lose a stalker, maybe a second one as well to these Marines and Hellions, but this is exactly what Hero wants to be doing. I mean, he's buying so much time, but Maru is micro his little heart out here, and can he close the depot? Okay, so he stops these Stalkers from getting inside the base. The tank will be out soon as well, but damage again just done by Hero, and look at this. This might be, anu this might be a short game. I was going to say another one, but uh, we'll see what Maru can do. I mean, the tank is almost out, and once the tank sees you up, that should absolutely shut down this party, because Hero does not have blink, but Hero's also the kind of guy to just still just run into the main base and try to kill the tank. Maru will re immediately again. The tank reveals itself, and I think at this point, Hero's like, all right, that's it. Party's over. Yeah, Hero's more than ready for this move out. Like, well, not with an army necessarily, but having the Warp Prism in position. And Maru, that's a nice scan there, seeing the Templar Archives and the Robo. Yep, but he also sees that the Templar Archives is not working. So he's like, I already have Storm and I'm in all sorts of trouble, or it's going to be Zealot Archon. And that obviously requires a slightly different approach. We have a single High Templar being wiped in there, and that definitely gives us the idea that Hero is looking for a feedback on the Raven. As the scan goes down, Double Drop is going to show up in the main base. Hero is going to use Recall immediately. There is a Shield Battery as well. That battery won't really come into play. Widow Mind Shot settles for a Sentry, I believe, there. Or maybe even something else. Can we take a look at the sh uh, Shift L real quick? As Maru is sending the majority of his units to the other side of the map, a Sentry did go down there. The Immortal gets stacked immediately. The Archons are derping a little bit. We have a War Prism revealing itself in the main base. And Maru has sent almost all of his units to the other side of the map. And that means that it's going to be so damn difficult to deal with these Zealots. And it seems like he is completely turning around. Yeah, I mean... It was a nice little push from him. You saw how it could all connect very nicely, but this war prism has caused a storm in the base of Maru. SV's going down in the plenty. Hero is taking a fourth base behind this, and Maru's third base, I think it just got finished there in the main base. And look at that, even warping in an Arch Archon in the main here. And a sentry trying to force field Maru out of his own main base. I mean, that's a disrespectful hero. I know you were around in the Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm days, but we don't do that anymore, mate. <laughs> Like, what Hero has a lot is also some of that parting head in his prime, right? Where it's just like random aggressive builds, where it's like, you can do this every time. And he's like, oh, I know, but I've got 17 different variations of it. And that's why Hero is able to get himself in these great spots over and over again. 
Uh, it's now back-to-back -back games. Romaru is pretty much dead on arrival. He has tried to stay in it. He has tried to do a bit of a push. But the Storm show up and they connect with a lot of the buy units. And I think this time around, even Maru is going to have a hard time in turning this into a 15-20 minute game. But he did get a good trade there. And he actually has taken an army supply lead. And one of the Archons is getting pushed forward a little bit in range of the tank. Some trader Protoss units. Hero is uh, sometimes definitely a bit clumsy. Uh, but he is very rich, so I, mean, I feel like as long as you're rich, you can say like, it's okay, he's allowed to get away with this, but but this is a pretty terrifying army. Maru has one more very strong push, we're gonna bring some of the boys as well, as he lands an EMP, a few storms are mostly used as zoning storms, Hero just needs time for these robo units to show up, here come the disruptors. Here they come, but that's a big army from Maru, look at that, 85 army supply against 57, another chunky boy left behind, the disruptor disabled as well. If there's a window for Maru to do this, this is absolutely it, shield battery overcharge is used, Maru's chasing him into a corner in his own base, but there are a zealot flank in the bottom, oh, that I don't overcharge. know what's happening. That overcharge is godlike, I know that much. Without an overcharge, I think Hero would have been in all sorts of trouble. But that overcharge healed up for over a thousand shields, I'm sure of that. And then a lot of zealots coming in from the bottom. Random Robo and Robo Bay at the third. <gasps> Maybe we should ask him, is the Widow Mines do connect with a couple of the Robo units? And now even the probes are being pulled. We had SCVs being pulled. The probes are getting absolutely obliterated. The Hero is definitely struggling in trying to hold this. He is still down 25 army supply. Do we have another overcharge, Ben? I I don't think so, at least not for the time being. These disruptors so far, the robos are in separate locations, so these disruptors, when they're coming out, and that was a warp in before where all the units got sniped before they even came to the field. This is very close, but I think this Zealot warp in is going to start pushing him back here. But Maru, he's got more reinforcements. Disruptor is a little far forward. EMP connects with the Disruptor. We know that Maru wants it, but there is another Nova flying forward, and every second that goes by is a good one for the Korean Protoss, who is still enjoying a 67 probe economy. Two more Disruptors on the way, warping in more Zello, swaps in a set of High Templar somewhere as well. Oh. And I think that will do it, as that Nova connects with a bunch of Ghosts. Maru is not done yet. He wants to keep on trying, but these Medivacs are working overtime. There is no more energy left on them. Every single stim hurts this Terran army so much. And Maru is in serious trouble and forced to tap out. GG. Yeah. We do see Maru opting for a very different style in that he SCB scouted his opponent immediately. And it was like, all right, you're playing a normal game here, a normal build order. I get to see the Stargate immediately. Ooh. And already, you know, got a few extra probes on this gas here. Doesn't want to lose them at the natural, obviously, but already. Oh, oh. Oh, both players having a misclick there. I saw the Adept shoot at the Assimilator. Now the Reaper shot at the Nexus. Reaper tries to go for the Juke, but that does not work out. And I see oh. a Void Ray in production. I was going to play the guessing game with Juke, man. Was it going to be Phoenix or Oracle? It's a Void Ray. As the follow-up is a Raven. I often say, unless your name is Maru, you're not allowed to make a Raven against Protoss players that play Phoenix. Maru is very good in keeping this alive, but it does team that Hero is going to do for something that I think we can absolutely qualify as a cheese, but it doesn't mean it's an all-in cheese. It just means that he's going to oh. do something weird as these two adepts let their shade finish up. And this is a very rough start for Hero <gasps> and the Void Ray flies into a Widow Mine. Oh my goodness. Maru says the tables have turned this time around. It's up to you to have a disastrous start and that's a slow warp in Benjamin. Slow warp in stake forever. The Void Ray falls and stalkers fall and this is as bad of a start wow. as I have seen in a very, very long time nothing going hero's way maru has an absolutely perfect start here and hero is going to be kicking himself for going for this in the first place lovely scan here on this natural does get to see that it is templar archives loses last <laughs> phoenix i mean resources lost up again let's go i mean i mean hero he's just smiling a little bit that's a 20 that's a 20 to 1 Dude, like ratio, that is terrible in this army. I don't think he has any chance of slowing this down or 50, stopping it. 57 army supply for Maru, 18 for Hero. Now we know that Zealots are pretty good and stuff, but how good can three Zealots really be? <laughs> I, have to, I have the feeling that for the first time in the history since Shield Battery Overcharge has been introduced, Maru is safe to take a fight in range of Shield Battery Overcharge. This game has been a straight up disaster for Hero, who's gonna try to make some magic happen with a Guardian Shield and a couple sentries, drops a force field. But I think no matter how good these force fields are, nothing will save him. And they are good, but Myron's micro is good as well. He goes for the hot pickups. We have an overcharge, but this Terran Army, Ben, it's too big, it's too powerful, and we are going to a deciding game five. Oh, we certainly are, and that's just what we want, right? The last pile on here at the third base goes down. The Arc on the left side is trying to deal damage, but that is just too much bio. Maro's going to tie things up here, and the smiling assassin, will he be smiling going into the fifth game here?
We had obviously a bit of a break. Players requested a break, and sometimes you wonder who comes better out of that break. Well, this break definitely uh, was amazing for Maru. Pretty much all you can do with him is attack move and maybe some Warp Prism Micro, but there's no Warp Prism on the field. I mean, he's warping in all... This is a nice shield battery, to be fair, but... Yeah, it's just too much, isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely too much. He knows it too. He's just digesting the loss at the moment, and he's like, all right, everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. We do have a few Zealots counterattacking, being annoying, but that's great if you have an army at home. But those Zealots, that is pretty much the army, as the Interference Matrix has uh, pretty much made this Archon useless for the last 10 seconds. A few more Zealots warp in. The bio is a bit overstimmed, but Maru obviously knows that there is really nothing that can go wrong here. The writing is on the wall. We will get a Game 5 in our second semi-final. Finals, even though these Zealots find some success, but there is one High Templar and one Sentry. And not even in uh, some special co-op mission are you going to turn something out of those units. The Double Reaper, you see a Hellion. It is important that this Adept does not go down for nothing. It gets a shut off. Second Adept is going to show up, maybe cancel the Shade. Uh, two Adepts, we obviously saw them have a great fight against Double Reaper, Hellion on Waterfall. Maru needs to make sure that does not happen all over again, as he does end up losing a Reaper very quickly. And I think even this Hellion Ben is going to be in a bit of trouble. The Adepts are going to Shade on top of it. Beautiful split fire there by Hero that he doesn't overkill on the Hellion, but he does end up losing one of the adapts, and that's going to make Maru's life a little bit easier, but Hero will still get the SCV. He certainly will. Hero just, he uses these two adapts really well. I mean, Maru was sleeping a little bit there, right? He let the, the adapts, Reaper. Yeah, he let yeah. the adapts uh, get on top there, and a third joins the field here, and that would of mine is just out of position. Another SCV does fall here. He is playing very carefully around the this Widowmine as well. this fight as well, so it can get a few more shots up. But there is a Widowmine, and I hope that Hero did not Ooh. forget about it. I wonder if Hero is going to try to let the Widowmine shoot at the Adept. Something that Protoss players can pull off, but I guess at this point there is no real follow-up, so he doesn't care about letting that Widowmine fire. Equally so, uh, world-class Protoss players with the Adepts early on, you know, like they're both playing phenomenally here. They're doing everything with every little resource that they have. Maru knows what he's up against now. Oh. That win of mine was just <laughs> absolute juice, though. Eight probe kills go down, one to the first stalker. Lots of loss of mining time, but that is a healthy amount of stalkers. Yep, uh, there is a tank, but the tank just repositioned. That means it's not siege up yet. Will Hero go for the tank? The answer is yes. Second tank just popped, but that tank is in range of all the stalkers, and Maru loses two tanks against the first blink and the Raven. Oh no, what a sad moment for Maru to reposition that tank. And now it's gonna feel like a century before tank number three comes out. Even though Maru had an absolutely perfect with a mine shot on the other side of the map, Ben, he is in all sorts of trouble. This is a ridiculous amount of stalkers. Hero can micro these stalkers for days, and I think this could very well be it. Stim is nowhere near done. Maru is forced to pull SCVs from the natural, but he is taking a ludicrous amount of damage. He's got no firepower in the mix. I mean, even the medevac on the other side of things gets sniped. I mean, the Widowmine goes off again, but that's a blink. That's a game victory blink right there. The tank pops out, gets a few shots off, but it goes down. Maru, you can see it on his face right now. It's a painful, painful moment, and GG here moves on to the grand finals to go up against Bunny. Oh my goodness, and Maru, he lets the defeat sink in.